Hey guys, in this video, let us learn to configure Spring Security without extending Web Security Configurer Adapter. This is for Spring Boot versions between 2.7.x and 3.0.x. In versions below 2.7.x, we need to create a class that extends Web Security Configurer Adapter and override these two methods. The first method configure which takes authentication manager builder as parameter is responsible for authentication and the second method configure which takes HTTP security is responsible for authorization. Now in case of spring versions between 2.7.x and 3.0 we need to create a class that is annotated with at configuration and at enable web security. We are using at enable web security because we are disabling the default security configuration of Spring Framework and providing our own security configuration. In this class, we need to create two beans. One bean is for authentication, that is, you need to create a bean of user detail service, just like how you have done in the older versions. Based on the type of authentication, you have to use the appropriate class. The second bean is for authorization. Here, we need to create a bean for security filter chain. This is an interface. So, we will be creating an object of default security filter chain, which is an implementation class of security filter chain. Okay, in Spring Boot versions 3.0.x and above, the way of writing the authorization code is little bit different. We will deal with that in a different video. Now, let us go to the application. I have already created the application. Spring security in memory. Here the type of authentication that I am going to use is in memory. That is, we are going to provide the credentials programmatically. Let me open form.xml. The Spring Boot version is 2.7.l. The dependencies that I have added are Spring security and Spring web. Let me open the controller class. I have a controller class with three methods. The first URL is slash. This URL or this REST endpoint should be accessible for all the users even without authorization and authentication. That is all the users should be permitted to access this URL. This is similar to a home page. The next URL starts with slash user. This URL should be accessible for all the users who are authenticated and having the role as admin or user. The third URL starts with slash admin. This URL should be accessible to the users who are authenticated and having the role as admin. Now let us go to the configuration class. I have created web config class inside config package and annotated it with add configuration and enable web security. Here we need to add two beans. One bean is for authentication, the other bean is for authorization. Let us first start creating the authentication bean. Let us create the bean for user detail service. Public user detail service, user detail service. Within this, let us create users. The type of authentication we are using is in-memory authentication. This in-memory authentication is used only for understanding purpose. We will not use this in production. Let me create a reference of user details. To create the user objects, user1 equal to user dot with username. Call the static method of user, pass the username, the first user is admin, dot password, let me pass the raw password, this has to be encoded, we will do that later and let us also add the roles, dot roles. This user is having two roles, one is admin, the other role is user. This method returns a reference of user builder, we need a reference of user details, so call the dot build method. Similar to this, let us create the next user having the role as user. Let me give the username as Sri, password as Sri123 and the role as user. Now we need to return an object of the class that implements user detail service. Here we are using in-memory authentication. So let us return an object of in-memory user details manager. This is a class which implements user detail service. So let me add the code return new in memory user details manager. I am going to select the second constructor 
which takes collection as parameter within the parameters we are going to pass both the user objects that we have created now user1 comma user2 let me click on this user details manager open declaration so you can see this is a class which implements user details manager let me click on this again this user details manager internally extends user detail service so obviously in memory user details manager implements user detail service let us annotate this class with add bean let us also create a bean for password encoder public password encoder return new bcrypt password encoder we are encoding the password using bcrypt password encoder and annotate this class with add bean pass this password encoder as parameter inside this method we need to encode this raw password so let me pass this reference password encoder dot call the encode method which expects the raw password in our case it is admin123 let us do the same thing for the second user now our authentication bean is ready similar to that let us create the authorization bean let me import bean in this case we are creating a bean for security filter chain which is an interface security filter chain let me give the method name as configure this is similar to the older versions the naming convention what i have given is similar to the older versions of course you can give the method name as configure in this case also and one more thing also i wanted to tell you it, the, the return type of this method doesn't have to be user detail service you can directly give the return type as in memory user details manager i am giving the generic interface name that's it within configure method pass http security as parameter which helps in authorizing each and every request here we are going to authorize the urls based on the roles let us start writing the code http dot csrf cross site request forgery dot disable what is the csrf this is an attack from the browser which tricks the user to click on malicious request in this case we are calling disable method the csrf dot disable should be called only when the client of this rest api is a non browser if you are testing your rest api in the browser you don't have to add this method directly you can call dot authorize request you can see four methods given over here the first two methods are used for spring versions 3.2.x and above these two methods are used in spring versions between 2.7.x and 3.2 let me select the second method which takes customizer as parameter this customizer is a functional interface let me show you that let me simply add customizer i will click on this link this is a functional interface it has one single method customize which takes which takes a parameter if you notice this is similar to the consumer interface of java 8 in case of consumer it takes only one method accept with one parameter so whenever you want to modify your input then you can go in for this customize method now let me go back to the code because this is a functional interface we can implement it using lambda expression the method takes one parameter so let me give the parameter name as r within which we are going to authorize the urls based on the roles what is the meaning of it in case of the controller class i have the first url as slash this url will be accessed by all the users without authentication and authorization in case of slash admin i want to authorize the users who are having the role as admin to access the same point and in case of slash user i want to authorize the users who are having the role as user or admin to access this rest end point that part of the code only we are going to write in web config if you have already worked in older versions you might be knowing this so let me add the method at dot and matches let us select the second method within which we are going to pass the url patterns in my case if the url is slash then permit all the users without any authentication and authorization let us authorize the next url at dot and matches 
slash user slash star star dot has any role that is anyone who is having the role as admin or user is authorized to access this particular rest endpoint let us authorize the third url auth dot ant matches slash admin slash star star anyone who is having the role as admin is authorized to access this rest endpoint authorized request dot form login if you are going to test the rest api from the browser you need a form to enter the credentials then you can use this form login method but if you are using basic authentication method to test the rest api then you need to use http basic method i will show you that also form login the return type of this form login is form login configurer but we need an implementation class of security filter chain so let us add the method build here also dot and dot build this returns default security filter chain this is the implementation class of security filter chain let me show you that also i will add the return statement and let me click on security filter chain open implementation so you can see this default security filter chain implement security filter chain so in this method you are returning an implementation class of security filter chain let me remove this customizer let me also add admin annotation let me import security filter chain okay this method throws exception so add throws declaration okay now our configuration file is ready let us run the application the application has started successfully if you notice the default security filter chain class is initialized and it will secure any request that is coming into this rest api okay let us test this application in the browser the first url is localhost colon 8080 so i am getting the output as welcome to online book library let me give it a slash admin slash books this is the second url that i am having automatically it will open a form expecting the credentials let me give the credentials of admin admin and admin 123 click sign in i'll get the output now let us also pass on the user url that is user slash books the admin is allowed to access this particular url also and we are getting the output now let us log out see in case of spring security there are two pages which are added automatically login and logout page the login page is having a form and this is our logout page we click on this and let us add the user credentials p and sri 123 getting the first page that is okay fine let me give it a slash user slash books i am getting the output for this particular url because the user is authorized let me try to access this admin slash books we will be getting a white label error page because the user is not authorized to access this particular rest endpoint the status code is 403 forbidden let me go back to the application this time let us use http basic authentication so the method is http basic so this method is responsible for configuring the http basic authentication this is the only change that is needed save the application and relaunch it the application has started successfully this one cannot be tested from the browser so let us use the postman app to test the rest api i am in the postman app let us give the url as localhost 8080 all the users are authorized to access this rest endpoint now let me change the url to admin/books the user has to be authorized we have not given any credentials let us see what is happening you will be getting the responses unauthorized status is 401 unauthorized to add the credentials in postman app click on the authorization tab select basic auth give the username and password let us pass on the admin credentials now present
you will be getting the proper output. Let us modify the URL instead of admin. Let me give it as user slash books. So the user who is authenticated properly and having the role as admin is authorized to access this particular URL. Now let us change the credentials for user. The username is Sri and password is Sri123. Let me press enter again. So in this case, the user who is authenticated and having the role as user is allowed to access this rest endpoint. Now let me change user to admin. This means the user who is having the role as user is trying to access the admin rest endpoint. Let me click send. I am getting the status code as 403 forbidden. Which means the user is not authorized to access this rest endpoint. That's all.